Hello and welcome to a new video about networks. Last time we talked about layer 1, the physical layer. Now we know, ok, we have a cable, we have this and that, and we have this voltage level and those symbols to transfer our logic and so on, our, our information. This is the, the symbols, the logic. Yeah? This, this, now we can get information from here to there. Yeah? But this information which is transferred, is this still correct? Is this still, is this still valid information or is it just wrong? Yeah? Did I read something wrong out of this information sent? Was it maybe disturbed somewhere in the way and so on? So to check those transferred information, this is a topic which is located in, in layer two, yeah? the data link layer. The data link, the main, the main Part of the data link layer is to check if the information is transferred correctly. Okay. So, therefore, what does it mean? Yeah. So, we have a data stream usually. And this is... This is, this is built into blocks. Okay. The data stream will be blocked. data stream blocked. It's not blocked, the data stream. It will be separated and blocked. Separated. Uh, separated. And one of those data blocks yeah, is called frame. One data block is a frame. And this frame is transferred by layer 1. Okay. So we're saying layer two is taking the data, chunk of data, saying, okay, this is a data block. Huh? This is my frame and please layer one transfer it. Huh? Layer two on the opposite side is looking at the data block and must somehow find out if this data is consistent, if this is the, exactly the same data as it was before, before sending it. Yeah. So we have in there, uh, we have in there checksums. Yeah. Checksums for, for integrity, for, for integrity check. If the data was altered or not. Okay, checksums. And if the checksum is all right, then it is received somehow. Yeah. Message through, okay, layer two, yeah, I've received it, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe it's, so it may be received, it may be discarded. What is it? Ah, this cannot, I cannot read it. Or maybe. In some protocols, there's even the possibility that it, it will be corrected. So, aha, uh -huh. oh, oh, I cannot read this, but this must be that. Uh, because pff, data will be corrected and also received then somehow. Uh. So, this is the data things. And we, the also one thing is uh, that we have a data flow control. Uh, And multiplexing of different streams. Mm -hmm. Data flow control multiplexing of different streams. You know, the data link layer, so the, it chunks the, the data stream into frames, labels the frames. Uh, check somehow if the transfer was correct or not, and that's it. That's the original topic of the, of the data link layer. However, the, the ISO OSI reference model did not, did not check uh, for, um, you know, competing access to one transfer media. 
So we have one transfer media. We have several stations which might post something or read or write something to this transfer media to exchange information on this transfer media. So there is some competition between them to access this, this uh, medium. So according to IEEE, uh, what does IEEE mean? International Electric and Electronic Engineers or something like this is an organization, and an mighty organization of, of electronic and electric engineers. And they said, okay, layer two originally consists of two sub-layers. Yeah? According to IEEE, There are two sub-layers. One sub-layer is called media access. Control. Or MAC for short. Sure. Maybe you heard of a MAC address. Huh? This is the reason. Huh? This is layer to a the lower level, okay, the lower level of these two sub layers, media access control. Yeah. This is somehow uh, taking care about about uh, this this uh, media sharing. Yeah, taking care about media sharing. There are, for, of course, different uh, things. So we have to avoid or collisions. Avoid the two two stations wants to to talk to the same thing, or at least check for collisions to ensure the data is transferred proper. Right. So basically, you can distinguish between two things. This is the controlled access. Two possible possibilities. Possibilities. I never know how to write this. Two possibilities. I think with one L. I will have a look at it. <laughs> two possibilities. This is controlled access. What does, this mean? what does this mean? This means, like in the classroom, okay? Somebody is raising their hand because he or she wants to talk. Yeah? So, and the teacher says, ah, yes, please, Marcus or Yvonne. <laughs> Name, yeah? Go. Yeah? Then the shared media, our communication media, the air to transfer sound is somehow shared between those. There's one controller controlling who in which time has access to this media. Controlled access. All right? There might be, like in our example, uh, additional information line, for instance, optical information to, to announce its the will to, to access the media. Yeah? And there are more sophisticated approaches uh, which will not need, there's, where there's no need to have additional, additional communication channel just for messaging. I want to tell something. Controlled access. Another thing is the distributed access. This means nobody is controlling. If we are, if we are uh, talking at the same time, however, we are noticing we are talking at the same time. So pro the typical behavior of a, of an Ethernet is that way. Yeah? It might be explained easy by uh, example of a telephone telephone conversation. Yeah? If both are starting to talk at the same time, which will happen, yeah, of course, yeah. I'm sure you have noticed, then usually if 
it runs, if it's not already a fight, if it's real conversation, then both will start, will stop the conversation because they realize, oh, okay, we're talking both at the same time. Yeah? And then we'll start again after a random stop. Yeah? Then they will negotiate somehow who is now the one who starts talking. This is distributed access. Everybody has the right to access the media. Yeah? And there are also protocols for this. So this is the sublayer of, of media access control. Right? And a second sublayer is then the logical link control. Logical link control. This is what actually uh, is the original original intention of layer two, uh, but is also now uh, masking masking the Mac layer. Somehow, it doesn't really matter which Mac media access control is used. The logical link layer provides one interface to layer 3, to the upper layer 3, and so on. So this is somehow an adaption layer. And there is also the other things, yeah, which is located in, in, the, in what I've mentioned here. Yeah. The typical layer two things, this is now in logical link control. Yeah? But this is an additional masking the Mac layer, make it transparent, which Mac mechanism is used. Right? So that's the data link layer. Yeah? And if some intermediate hop is, we said, okay, there's a repeater. In layer one, there was the repeater. How is a repeater called here? So if we really stop the logic of the link yeah and have two ports for instance yeah here we're ending the link and here a new link begins yeah this thing is called bridge yeah this is a bridge ending begin of layer 2. So here the logical link ends and begins. Here the, the communication checks, this integrity check and so on, checks on checks and so on is done. It's, the, it's called bridge. If it has two boards, three boards, then it's called bridge. If it has more than three boards, then it's called a multi boards bridge. And such multiple split bridge is usually called switch. Yeah. It's often called or bridging. Bridging or switching hub. How is this working? How is this? Uh, what, what, what is the difference? Last time we talked about a hub, uh, repeating hubs. You said, okay, whatever is received on one board will be appearing at other, all other boards. Here, layer 2 is terminated. Layer 2 is terminated and uh, we want to transfer it further. All right? We want to transfer it further. Uh, so we have somehow a, a, a end address, a MAC address where it should end. Yeah? This is the address in, 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 in Ethernet, it was called MAC address. MAC address, there's the address where it should, the target. Yeah? Target. And a bridge now is learning, a transparent bridge is learning, and which port this MAC address is available. Okay. So it will not simply use all available ports to 
sent this information, it will select one port. Said, aha, yes, okay, this is for MAC address Bibelbobber. Yeah? Bibelbobber is reachable over port 3, Bibelbobber only port 3. So, datagrams, frames, which are interesting only for one port, are only sent to this exact one port and not to all. This brings down the load in a network significantly, significantly load drop. Significant. Okay, because simply all other branches, starting from this multipod switch, multipod bridge, are not affected. This maybe has a disadvantage because well, the, the, the advantage is that spionage is limited. Yeah? Because you cannot just plug me in and look what others are talking to each other, because they are only exchanging data to each other. And I, on my third board, I cannot see it. But also, you know, <laughs> the disadvantage is if there is a failure somewhere in the network. And there is also this, this thing, yeah, this is called source address table. This is the table where it is stored. This MAC address is this port, this MAC address is this port, this MAC address is this port. This is for transparent uh, uh, bridges or hubs. There are also source routing hubs or source, uh, source routing uh, uh, bridges uh, where somehow it's implemented in the datagram which way it should take. But the usual way is you have somewhere a source address table and the source address table is learned during operation. So whenever I get a datagram where I don't know where to put it, I put it on all, on all my ports, and somewhere will get an answer, then I can enter in the source address table, aha, okay, I've reached this via this port, do, 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 and so, only with a few data, data info chunks which are transferred, this source address table is pretty good filled. And this is also where a cheap and an expensive hub are different to each, not only there, but you know, cheaper hubs, the, the beginning there, they have entries, I don't know, 500. 500 different elements, network nodes can be handled by the source address tables. Yeah? Professional hubs have thousands and, and more, yeah? so they can handle a lot of different things. What happens if the source address table is filled? Then, of course, you don't know where to put it because your list is full, yeah? you cannot memorize, so you put it to all ports. The bridge is putting, or the switch is putting this information to all ports, and this then significantly increases suddenly the, the load, yeah? and usually you have a tremendous drop of performance in the network if this is happening. If there is one bridge inside which has a small source address table, then the whole network is, is somehow affected because this will... If there are other bridges... Yeah, so if... Because actually a bridge is somehow stopping the, the logical communication. Yeah? So also the, this, this thing with the uh, distributed access is no longer that severe, because if you have a bridge and you have a branch of this bridge, then only, only the ones which are inside this, this branch of the bridge, they will compete yeah? on the other branch of the bridge. There's another, they can talk at the same time. So this will also bring down load. So those bridges, they are significantly dropping the load there. Mm -hmm. Multiboard bridge. This is the this is the thing which is working on layer two bridge. Huh? Multiboard also called switch, switching hub, bridging hub, working with a source address table. The one thing needs to be mentioned. The latency of a bridge is a little bit, oh, well, it's significantly longer than for a hub. A hub will, it just has, you know, it just has to repeat. 
There's no thinking about. A bridge has to think where to repeat it. A bridge has to look up in a lookup table where to put this. And this takes some time. So the latency, uh, latency is around 5 to 20 microseconds. So why my microseconds? This is not long. Yeah, compared to a hub, a repeating hub. We are usually faster than 0 to 7 microseconds. So it's significantly increased. All right. So it's not just a little bit. Is this now severe? Is this now extreme? Well, you have to consider that if you only use a hub, a repeating hub, then there will be a lot of collisions. If you, like I said, if you're, uh, if you're, segmenting your collision domain in several smaller units, then this does not really matter because there is less repeating necessary. The less collisions are happening, less repeating. So there is simply not that much competition for the media. So this latency times, yes, it's true, but it's not that severe. And this is the reason why usually in nowadays we are only using multipod bridges. There is no... I, I don't think you can buy a hub still, for sure. Yeah, but they would be expensive because it's just for special reasons nowadays. Layer 2 data link layer. That's what's behind it. And the client of layer 2, the, the service layer 2 is providing, is for layer 3. Layer 3 is the so-called network layer. What is behind the network layer will be explained in the next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.